Uh, this is the kind of workshop space that we've got access to. You may have seen a few videos where um, we've been using some of the space that we've got next door as well. Um, I'm actually, I've been exiled to the garage um, for uh, this moment in time as the guys next door are just rearranging some of the pallets to give me more space which is all great because um, I've got loads of space um, I need loads of space to be able to bring in some more of the vehicles that we've got coming through. But today I wanted to talk to you specifically about um, working through a particular issue that we've got. Um, we have a problem, this is our, our conversion, the one that I'm currently working on at the moment. This is a classic VW camper van, 1971, so an early bay. And it's been converted um, basically using an entire inside of a Tesla Model S. Um, so it's gonna have upwards, it's gonna have 200 mile range, possibly above. I've said optimistically 200 mile range, but I reckon we can get some more out of that. Um, and it's got a small Tesla drive unit in there as the motor as well. Absolutely beautiful system. The issue we've got, so the vehicle now runs, we've got drive shafts arriving very soon to actually make it move, but the motor now turns, so all of that is configured. The issue we've got is it's not charging. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk you through this and let you know uh, the kind of approach that we take with this, talk you through some of the kit that we've got, um, and hopefully we'll get to an answer and get to a diagnosis as to why that's not working and what we can do about it. So let's have a look at what's going on. Okay, so the current setup that we have inside this camper van um, is, as I said, it's a, a Tesla system. So there's the Tesla drive unit, nicely nestled between the rear wheels. Like I say, that works. Um, if I had an extra pair of pants, I'd show you. Um, but it spins, it turns on, um, and everything is working fine there. As you can see from the back, it, forgive the mess. Obviously, we're getting it working first before we tidy everything up, so don't criticise me for that. Um, getting it working first, then it'll all be tidied up, I promise, even before we take it out, of course, otherwise we're going to get in a proper tangle. Um, so what we've got going on here is the charger, you can see just on the side here. This is a Elcon TC 6.6 um, kilowatt hour charger. It's their new generation 4, which is lovely and compact, single fan on the top of it. Really brilliant unit. What should happen is that the power that is coming in from the side, so there's our socket on the side, so that's a Type 2 connector in the petrol cap there. The power, AC power, 240 volts, should come down the back, uh, down the cable, uh, out of the uh, old, where the old fuel tank needs to come in, and ran and into the charger. Um, and that's a simple, you know, live neutral earth cable that's coming through. But in addition to that, the charger needs to be told to turn on. And that's the issue that we've got right now. So the charger is CAN enabled and is connected to our BMS system. So what should be happening, excuse me, is the pilot proximity cables that are in the um, charging cable itself, should be able to just connect straight to the charger and, and power it on. It should be able to get um, 240. There's a lot of safety built in, so you've got to follow all that back. But it's not working. Now, what's probably going on um, is, in addition to this, we bought this kit from, some of this kit from Zero EV down in Bristol in the UK. And here is a low voltage junction box, this black box just on top of the white box here. Um, in fact, let me see if we can get a bit closer for you. The black box on top there. That is uh, basically a Datacom's um, central piece that is um, distributing information different ways around the vehicle. Um, so it's, it's kind of becoming a middle place between, in this circumstance, our BMS and our charger. Um, so I need to dig into this and just work out what things are working, what things aren't, whether I need to bypass, because this, this low voltage junction box from Zero was designed to work with a Tesla charger, which we're not using. As I said, we're using an Elcon TC charger. Um, so we're going to see how that works. But let me just show you, first of all, what happens when I plug it in. Um, so at the moment, I'm using a, a granny cable, um, just for simplicity. Uh, so here's a granny cable plugged into a three-pin socket on the wall. We do have a Type 2 7 kilowatt charger outside. Um, when I plug it in, here we go. <laughs> when I plug it in, swap the plugs over. Ah. So we have... A few lights are coming on the granny cable, so it's showing me that the, the granny cable itself is working and 
with getting electricity from the side. But obviously that unit isn't going to provide electricity to the van unless it knows it's safe to. So these plugs, where's the end gone? Here we go. These plugs here, I should have got this ready before I started filming, shouldn't I? These plugs here are not going to give me any power until the tiny little plugs on the top tell the system that it's connected and that it's safe to. They are not live. I could lick them all I want and nothing would happen. Which is why then, when I connect it to the socket on the side of the van, absolutely nothing happens. Confirmation. Normally this would light up. Um, the car would light up and it would show the rate of charge on there as well. Nothing is happening. I've got no noise inside. I've got you normally you hear the fan spinning of the charger. Nothing is happening. So I need to trace this through and work out why the system is not reading um, the pilot and proximity that are now currently connected and why it's not doing that properly. So that is step number one. Okay, so I couldn't show you this because I know enough hands, but we've tested continuity. So I've got, I don't know if you can see there, the green and the yellow cables on the top there. That's your CPPP pilot proximity cables. I've got continuity between those and the plug, which is through that hole. And similarly, I've got continuity between um, the live neutral earth on the um, AC, uh, which is good as well. In one sense, it was um, annoying because if it's just a simple disconnected cable that's much easier for me to fix however it would have been a real pain to take all that apart and find where the where something had come loose so it's good that it's all fine uh, but it means moving on to the next step so the first thing I need to be looking for is whether our BMS, our battery management system, is re receiving a constant 12 volt signal. Um, it has three 12 volt signals that it can get. Um, there's a constant 12 volt, uh, a ready or ignition 12 volts, and then a charge 12 volts as well. The idea being that it needs a constant kind of to keep it in idle mode, sitting back doing nothing, so that when it receives ignition or charge, it can switch on and provide the parameters to make those things operate properly. So all I need to do just very quickly is my next test, is this is the cable that's going uh, into the BMS that I've just disconnected, and I just need to double check um, whether it's actually receiving um, a 12 volt signal. Uh, so as I stick it into the constant live, there she goes, you can see on the meter. Uh, yep, so I'm getting my 12 volt down there, so there's no issue there at all. So next steps. So now that I've confirmed that um, the, the elements are connected together properly, um, so I know that I've got continuity between the charging pins on the socket on the side and the pins on the inside of the van, um, one of the options could have been that simply connecting into the socket could have come loose somehow, um, which would have been an easy fix in the sense that it's one connection, but then again, a difficult fix I have to get to it all, which is a bit of an issue. So I'm quite glad that's all working fine. So the next thing that I need to work out is what I think is happening is simply the pilot and proximity signals coming down the charger cable, up and down the char charging cable, um, are just not being read by the BMS correctly. So my next step is to move where they are currently, just bypass the low voltage junction box um, and attach them directly to where they need to go, which will tell me um, that, I'm, that I can kind of test it in as, as much isolation as possible, make sure it's working properly, and then tidy it up into a better space. So what specifically I'm going to do is I'm going to change over the CAN cable connection. The charger only really has a CAN high, CAN low as information to tell it to turn on or off and at different levels. Um, other than that, we haven't connected any other intelligence to that system and that does the job enough. So I need to change that round again to a more direct system. Secondly, I'm going to connect the pilot and proximity signals again directly into the BMS rather than through the junction box, just so I can be absolutely sure which parts are working. So it's a bit of a wiry jiggery pokery. I'll use some splitters and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so a little update with the uh, charging. We are uh, in a position now where basically the, um, the battery packs are isolated by a couple of contactors, that's for very obvious reasons. So when you um, want to use the battery pack in any capacity, you have to uh, fire those contactors safely to be able to use it. All of that's working great for driving, um, but the issue we've got is that it's not working for charging. Now, we've managed to fix the pilot proximity, so the vehicle knows when it's plugged in, um, and then we can use that signal to disable other parts of the vehicle potentially driving, because uh, you don't want to be driving off while the cable is still attached. I've done that before, it doesn't work well. If you ever look at the back of our VW, our green one to hire, look quite carefully, the charging socket is slightly tilted. That's on me. Um, so in this instance, what we're basically having to do when charging, 
we need to close those contactors so that the uh, charging network, so the wall, you know, the power in the grid can get into the battery box. Um, so we're just figuring out a way to do that. Right now we're in a stage where as long as the ignition is turned on and the start power is engaged, which means it's got all the contactors closed safely, we are able to start charging. So I just wanted to show you how that worked. So I'm just using this on a, on a granny cable. Yes, I know it's plugged into an extension. The extension is CRT uh, mains. I'm only doing it to test, so don't tell me off. Uh, and we're plugged into the side of the vehicle over here. If I show you on the battery management system, you'll see the pack current right there in the center. It's only on 0 0.5, 0 0.6. That's because it's basically powering um, a little bit of the internal components and mainly as a motor for the coolant. Um, so what will happen is I'll plug it in. Uh, so it's all plugged in now. If I just switch it on, the lights will come on. Oh, wrong one. Ha <laughs> ha! Switch it on. There we are, lights come on. Give it a second to find the car, test the pilot proximity, and then it clicks in. And then our system, there we are. So that pack current has now jumped up to 7.4 amps. And you can't quite hear it because of the rest of the racket, but the charger fan has turned on as well. Um, so that's all working brilliantly. I have tested this with 32 amps on a seven kilowatt charger, um, and that's working great as well. Bear in mind, we're on a 400 volt pack, so that's the equivalent of about 13 amps. Um, what are you looking for there? Um, if you wanna do some quick maths for me? That's fine, no worries. So that's what we're up to so far. So the next steps are, while the vehicle is charging, it is producing a 12 volt signal to say that it is charging. We need to basically piggyback on that 12 volt system and use it to also safely trigger um, the contactors. Now the way we're gonna do that is with a, uh, a kind of relay loop. So here we go. So this is a um, quite clever but quite basic relay loop com consisting of a couple of basic relays and one timer relay, which is really important for the pre-charge because again, we're, we're firing a high voltage pack here. We need to be careful of that pre-charge there's an inrush current when you first connect these things so we need to be careful of that so what we've got here is a simple system where by taking in um, a feed from the 12 volt to say it's charging that will be the negative that one there uh, which will just go to chassis in this instance and then the other cables go to the contactors themselves of my my little octopus uh, yeah, so that's the way it's going to work at the moment. Um, this is going to be inside uh, the the first battery box where the other pre-charge components are, just because it's a simple place to put them all. I don't have to go very far to the pre-charge um, circuitry, uh, and that's going to help us connect it all very, very safely. Um, but right now, we're on about 90%, so actually our priority right now is we need to drive it a bit. Uh, we need to go out and about, uh, have a little bit of a drive, test some of the other components to get the battery percentage down so that charging can actually be a bit more accurate. Uh, so, yeah, next step's coming up. So, uh, this is an awkward ending to the video in that, um, obviously, I, we talked you through the ideas we were going to have, the way things need to work, that all stays the same. Um, what happened is that the, the kind of relay unit that I had designed and made up nearly worked. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. The principle was correct, but it didn't quite do the job that it needed to do. Um, and so we contacted um, one of our suppliers, which is uh, Zero EV uh, here in the UK. Uh, and they actually said, well, actually, what you're trying to do can be done with one of our control boxes. And I was like, great. So send us one of those. And so here we go. This is a Zero EV uh, controller uh, low voltage junction box. Um, very, very simple. Basically what it's doing is it's controlling the contactors for both when high voltage is required. So that's both in um, ignition live, so when you're trying to drive, and also for charging. Uh, so uh, whether you've got an ignition live um, or a charge request, that will trigger this box. Pre-charge uh, timer is built into this and it will fire the contactors in exactly the way they need to work. That's working perfectly. Um, and it means that we can actually charge the van and drive the van really, really simply. It comes, like I say, in this beautiful little box. It comes with looms, so I'm not going to create a whole new looms for it as well. I can put them wherever I want. It's working really, really great. Um, so that's kind of uh, summing up how our charging works. Coming next um, on the channel um, is James, who's building us some rear boot stuff. 
<laughs> Coming next is um, we're, we're nearly finished with Ruby. Um, and so uh, we're going to be doing kind of sum up video very, very soon. That is going to be one that you can't miss. Uh, so please stay tuned, subscribe, like uh, the channel, uh, love this video, uh, uh, share it among people. I know this one's been a bit weird, um, but the next one will be fun. I promise you. Uh, you'll be able to look around our latest conversion. Uh, but yeah, and that's all for this time. If you are interested in an electric conversion of classic cars, um, we have camper vans, we have Porsche 911s, we now have a Golf Mark II um, coming in tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, anything you want to know, um, drop us an email um, and I'm sure we would love, uh, our team would love to uh, chat that through with you. Um, so until next time, see you later.